All right, guys. I told you I would try to make a video today of explaining the coral propagation system so that people that were having trouble understanding today in class or my remote people this week would get an opportunity to get a walkthrough of our system. So here goes. We're gonna start by looking at this tank here. This is one of five of our 50 gallon, what are called low boy aquariums. A low boy is an aquarium that is four feet long, two feet deep, but only 10 inches tall. So it's a special aquarium size that's specifically used for coral propagation systems. So these four tanks here are all what are called low boys. Anyway, this low boy is our what's called refugium. So refugium is an aquarium that's specifically used to house plants. So water gets pumped up from this guy and then enters the refugium. You can see the water is moving at a steady current across and then down these two pipes and back in. And the reason you have two is because if one fails, you still got one more. So anyway, this refugium has what, these are red mangroves. So they're actually quite difficult to take care of, but um, we have a couple that are doing very well right now. And we're planning to order more this year so that we can fill up our refugium. And then this stuff here is called Cato algae. So Cato algae is a type of um, macro algae that is often used in refugium. So what is the point of a refugium? The point is to remove nutrients such as phosphates and nitrates. So if you're the aquarium mangrove caretaker, you spray the mangroves every day. You check to make sure that the Cato algae is looking good, it's not brown. And then sometimes you have to scrape the glass here when we have a lot of excess algae and stuff growing on the glass. So refugiums, back to what they do, they remove nutrients. You don't want too many nitrates and phosphates in your aquarium, which are two things, uh, test kits that we have. We test nitrates and phosphates and we record it on our Apex Fusion system so that we can document what our nutrient levels are throughout the year. Now the reason you don't want your nutrients to be too high is they can lead to algae blooms. Algae blooms can make the water turn green, and if your water is green, the corals can no longer absorb the light coming from our lights that we have. It can then lead to hypoxia, which can kill our fish because they won't have any oxygen. So refugiums are a biological way of cleaning your water. Now, back, so let's move on to this Rubbermaid tub. This is a 100 gallon Rubbermaid tub. We have two of them. We call this one Sump 1, and we call this one Sump 2. So, Sump 1 has a lot of filtration that's taken place to clean the water. The goal here is to remove as much organic waste from the aquarium as possible. Because the more organic waste you remove, the cleaner the water. And when the water is really clear, the corals grow nice and happy. So, what are these things? So water is falling into our, what's called filter sock. And so this filter sock is used to remove excess organic waste, AKA poop. So it gets trapped in the filter sock, the water runs through and then into the system. When this filter sock gets cruddy and the water starts to get really high up, we have to take this filter sock off and put in a new one. We also have this filter sock over here, so we actually have two filter socks. Now this big device in the middle is our, um, our reefer skimmer, although the R seems to have broke here, but this is a protein skimmer. And so what you're looking at right now is bubbles that are getting more and more yucky as they get higher in the skimmer. You actually can adjust the levels of bubbles here. So if I twist this knob, that will make the bubble level that you can see right here go up. And so that will change the, you know, the organic waste that gets built up in here. So this is organic waste. 
in top of a protein skimmer, we call this the collection cup. The rest of the protein skimmer we call the cone. And so what's happening is organic waste is traveling more and more up the bubbles. Now it's actually going too much, so I gotta turn it down. So when you are the protein skimmer, you actually control this and you try to find the perfect balance of bubbles so it's not too much overflown into the waste cup, but it's not too low either. And so what happens is the organic waste travels up the bubbles and then falls into the collection cup. And then you simply come on the other side over here and you see this drain here flows down into this bucket. You then just simply undo this ball valve and you release the organic waste liquid in here and then you pour that out in the sink over there. So that's what the protein skimmer person does. Also inside this aquarium, we have a couple heaters to use to heat the water. This is just used to move the water around a little bit. And then what you're seeing a lot of inside here is live rock. So we have about 200 pounds of this stuff. So what is live rock? It is essentially dead coral that has molded itself together in a porous-like rock in which lots of microscopic life, you can see these two worms hanging in here, and there's even some amphipods, and then lots and lots of bacteria. You can even see right here this purple stuff, that's coralline algae, which is another type of algae that can be used to remove nutrients from your aquarium. And so this stuff acts as a biological filter for our coral propagation system. Whereas the protein skimmer and the filter sock acts as a mechanical filter, so using machines essentially to remove that organic waste. So the water is then gonna get high enough and flow through these two blue tubes and then down into this tank, which we call Sump 2. So you can see here, Sump 2 also has lots and lots of live rock too. This is amazing stuff, it's really magic. And over here, we have this guy. This is called our automatic top-off system, also known as the ATO. And so the automatic top-off system brings fresh water into the system as water evaporates from this system. Now about five gallons of water evaporates from this system every single day. And so new fresh water has to bring, be brought into the system. It's actually done automatically through this guy. So this is our reservoir tank. So what's happening right now is water is falling into this through a thin blue tube that you can see runs all way down into under our sink. Under our sink, let me get to it. Yeah. Under our sink, we have this guy, which is an RODI. We call the RODI Rody for short. Just gotta turn this ball valve. And what this ball valve there does is it allows water to track in all the way down to our reservoir tank. This tank here holds fresh water, not salt water. Because as water evaporates from the tank, fresh water leaves. So we have to put fresh water back in. So this is essentially a holding tank. And so what happens is that orange guy you see there, that's a pump. And it will pump in water through this orange tube into here as water evaporates from the system. So when this float switch, when this float switch senses that the water has become low in sump two, then new water gets put back in. This is the only tank that changes in the water level. Every tank here always has the exact same water level. So, the other important piece of Sump 2 is this guy, which is our main pump. So the main pump is a Core 20. It can pump 2,000 gallons per hour of water. We have a check valve that's right here, so if the system turns off, boom, Water doesn't just start siphoning into the system. So this pump blows this water through this 1.5 inch blue tube here, and you can follow it underneath the system. 
all the way to this tank, which we call this tank, tank one. This is tank one, tank two, tank three, and tank four. And the water also enters the system through this pipe right here. Um, so we have two ways that the water can enter the coral propagation system, through this return and these returns. So, normally this tank is full of water, but because of the power outage, tank one and tank two are currently at this moment out of order, but we're working on it. So tank one normally kept what are called SPS corals. SPS corals look like this. So they're your stereotypical branching, beautiful corals. This one's dead, but they um, grow very fast and we kept them all in tank one before. In tank two, we kept LPS corals, so large stony polyped corals. So these corals would include things like brain corals and frog spawn corals. Right now, all of our LPS corals are kept right here in tank three. These are what SBS corals we had left. But normally what's in tank three are soft corals. So in tank three and four, we kept the soft corals. In tank one and two, we kept the hard corals. We kept the hard coral known as SBS, small stony polyp, in tank one. And we kept the other type of hard coral LPS, which stands for large stony polyp in tank two. You also notice in each tank we have two lights. These are called radions. So each light is able to cast as, not, as much light onto one crate. And so we call this, we call this a rack. And each tank can hold two of these racks. So this is just one of them, but you can see that each tank can hold two racks. So the corals sit on a rack. So in this tank, you can see there are two racks. So anyway, back to tank three. Tank three would hold soft corals such as leather corals and mushrooms. And we also kept our clams in here too. In tank four, we held other soft corals such as zoanthids and we even kept anemones in this tank too. We only have a couple of anemones left. The power outage unfortunately caused a couple of our really nice anemones to die. But you can see we have one here, we have one here, and we have one over there and our large clam right now is right there. So, um, that is the basic setup of the aquarium. I'm trying to think what other things, ah yes. So underneath tank four is this beauty. This is what the Neptune Apex system looks like, okay? So this is our energy bar. So what's happening here is all these things that you see plugged in are programmed into our Apex Neptune system. Right there is the core, the main pump button. This is the Apex Fusion that this part here connects to, connects our fish, our coral propagation system to the internet. And this is our doser. So we dose calcium and alkalinity into our system. We dose about 150 milliliters of calcium and alkalinity solutions every single day. And then we also have this uh, WXM controller that allows us to have the lights, all the radions be controlled by the apex. And then we have the FFM, which allows us to um, have the automatic top off system. And also we have a leak detection over here. So if water began to leak over here, we would know about it. We actually have even a whole other energy bar over here I need to do a lot of plug organization, but this guy is where we have all the heaters and like the protein skimmer and all the stuff that's over here. Now, on this laptop is how we can control everything about the tank. So we can see that the current temperature of the tank is 76 degrees. We can see it's ORP, it's pH. The salinity um, probe is currently not really functioning well. so. The salinity of the tank is not 60 parts per thousand. That would be crazy. Uh, so that's not really true. But you can see all the different things that we are able to control with our system here. 
Um, currently we have the four radions, which are the lights are out, but if I turn this guy back on, you can see that light right there automatically turn right on. And so then I can turn it off, right off right there. So um, we'll talk more about this like apex and like programming, but one thing that's pretty cool that I wanted to show you as the last thing here is that when you feed the fish, you actually hit this B button here and it will show a little clock. And then what will happen is all the pumps that are in the tanks over here will turn off. So the tank will now become still so that the food doesn't fly all over the place. So when you feed the fish, you actually hit the B button there so that all the water slows down and you can see the corals a whole lot better and then feed them properly. The other thing that's cool that the Apex system does is it will, um, we can program and record everything from alkalinity to calcium. And so you can see here, I was actually recording data. This is all data that I did during COVID. Well, COVID happened March 16th I started. This is all data that I was recording trying to keep track of our calcium. We have magnesium. I wasn't really doing much magnesium tests, but this is magnesium here. And so what will happen is if you are a water chemist person, if, you te if you're testing one of the five things, phosphates, nitrates, um, calcium, magnesium, or alkalinity, you'll record it into the apex and you'll actually track yourself our, um, our parameters. So that is, the, uh, that is the tour of the tank. Uh, also, if you do the water change uh, job, you, this is the water tank that we have. You, you fill this guy up by simply turning this ball valve and then you actually get on a step ladder, you pour salt in so you make salt water in this giant tub and then we remove salt water from the refugium because it's just the easiest way because it's the highest thing up. And then when we're, we're ready to put more water in, you simply just turn this ball valve and you can just fill the tank back up with water. So our water changing for our system is a whole lot easier than it used to be now that we have this wonderful water tank. If you are a bucket cleaner, what happens is these buckets over here are all dirty. And so what you do with these guys is you pour a little vinegar in there and then you rinse it out with white vinegar. And then you can use this garden hose to spray it into the sink to make sure the bucket's nice and clean. And then you would just take a towel and dry it out. And then you would take the bucket and bring it from over there to over here, because this is where we keep our clean buckets. If you are a powerhead cleaner which, or a pump cleaner, any pumps that need to be removed from the tank, you would then dip in vinegar for like a day, and then you would take it out and scrub it in the sink like this power head right here could definitely use some cleaning. So you would take this power head out, let it sit in vinegar, um, then rinse it really well, and then put it back into the system so that our power heads can stay nice and clean and they can maintain efficiency. If you are the salt corrosion, you would clean up the salt corrosion on the pipes but also on our counters, our counters often get dirty. If you are the tidy organizer person, you would help keep all this stuff that you see here maintained. And you can see we have lots of labels here. So there is a method to this madness. It's just with the two tanks out of commission and me trying to plumb the system in right now, things are a little bit on the hectic side. So I think I actually was able to cover, this is the coral food, and this is the container we use to feed the corals. I think I was able to cover almost all the jobs from this video, so I hope this helps you out. 19 minutes and 35 seconds of pure Waz gold in the B225 coral propagation system. All right, see you later.